United States, trying to discourage China from helping Russia and turning this conflict into an even bigger superpower struggle. We'll go live to Sam Kiley in Ukraine and Phil Mattingly at the White House in just moments. But first, we have a report on all the newest developments in the war from CNN's Kristen Fisher. Russia is broadening its targets, with new airstrikes hitting the western city of Lviv, which previously had largely <clears throat> been spared. The mayor saying missiles hit near the airport. The city is just over 40 miles from the border with Poland, a NATO country, and Lviv has been a haven for refugees fleeing the conflict or a stop on the way to Europe. And Russia is not letting up on the capital, Kyiv, with new strikes on the northern residential district. Ukrainian emergency services saying one person died after remains of a downed missile set fire to a residential building. In the northeast, fires broke out in this massive market in the city of Kharkiv after it was shelled by Russian forces, with one rescue worker dying battling the blaze, according to city officials. In the southern city of Mariupol, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky saying 130 people have been rescued from that makeshift shelter that was allegedly bombed by Russian forces, a theater with the Russian word for children written beside the building that Russia denies attacking. Hundreds of Mariupol residents are still under the debris. Despite the shelling, despite all the difficulties, we will continue rescue work. The seemingly intentional targeting of civilians has led many in the Biden administration, including the president and secretary of state, to accuse Russia of war crimes as the State Department works to gather evidence against Russian President Vladimir Putin. In terms of international law, you have to have evidence, you have to have a body of uh, proof that in fact there was intentionality. And as civilians die in Ukraine, Putin held a concert marking the anniversary of the Russian annexation of Crimea. The concert featured patriotic songs like this one called Made in the USSR. With these ominous opening lines, Ukraine and Crimea, Belarus and Moldova, that's my country as his country suffers a collapsing economy caused by Western sanctions, Putin claims Russia has never been more united. The best proof is the way our boys are fighting in this operation, shoulder to shoulder, supporting each other, and if need be, protecting each other like brothers. That's a far cry from what a top U.S. general says is crippling Russian forces. They don't appear, from where I sit at least, to be particularly motivated or particularly uh, or particularly engaged in the campaign that they're undertaking. Kristen Fisher, CNN, Washington. Thank you, Kristen. Now, now I want to take you to the scene of a Russian missile strike in Kyiv. Our senior international correspondent, Sam Kiley, was there earlier today. Take a look at this. This is the scene in Vinograda, the northern edge of Kyiv, where a cruise missile landed here in the small hours of this morning. Now, officially, according to the authorities, it was shot down. Normally, that would mean that the warhead was destroyed in the air, but clearly, that is not the case. Beyond this truck here, beyond the JCB working, a kindergarten. Mercifully, no children in it, because, because of the level of bombardment of Kiev, of course, the kindergartens are closed. But it's right opposite another school for older children. But look at the ferocity of the blast. That is what remains of a vehicle right at the center, the epicenter of this blast, an absolute scene of devastation. If we look over this way, you can see the extraordinary level of devastation in this very densely populated residential area. These are homes, humble homes of ordinary Ukrainians struggling to get by, working with dignity, hoping one day to join the European community, possibly even NATO. And this, from Vladimir Putin's cons uh, perspective, is the result. Now, if we walk over this way, you can see just how devastating the size of these weapons is quite extraordinary. This is the result of one single blast, a blast that has ripped through this community, peppering cars, with shrapnel holes, every one of those would have torn through dozens of people, every one of those bits of flying hot metal designed to rip into human flesh like a razor, white hot and burning. And of course, mercifully, 
No children playing in the kindergarten. They are sick uh, that they're attacking these uh, residential apartment buildings. Uh, what more can you tell us uh, about the strikes uh, on the, the capital of Ukraine uh, earlier today, Sam? Well, I think the interesting thing about this strike and indeed the strike yesterday, which also uh, hit a residential area, is that in both cases they were these very high explosive cruise missiles that were actually shot down by the Ukrainians. Uh, in the blast yesterday there was less uh, explosive detonation because I think most of the most of the explosives were taken out in the air. This one very, very damaging. What does that indicate, though, Wolf? Well, it's not. What it isn't is artillery. What it isn't is surface-to-surface, -surface, relatively short-range missile technology. This is long-range missile technology, deliberately fired uh, at the capital city, but indicating that the Ukrainian military may be right in saying that they have pushed back the Russians from the outskirts of Kiev. Just today, the Ministry of Defense here in Kyiv said that in the southwest of the city and in the northeast they'd been successful in a counter-attack this week in driving in the case of the eastern part of the city or what they call the right bank of the Dnieper River as far back as 70 kilometers some 50 miles now we've got no independent verification of that apart from the fact that yes whilst Kyiv continues to be bombarded it, it is with these long-range more sophisticated weapons than the short-range artillery that had been so punishing uh, on the outskirts of the city uh, in previous weeks particularly when Clarissa Ward and her colleagues uh, Matthew Chance were here this seems to be a potential turning point that's certainly how they're being described here by Ukrainian officials who are talking about having established two lines of defense for the city and that they're beginning to establish a third wolf. Sam Kiley, stay safe over there in the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv. Uh, we will be in touch. Uh, here in the United States, uh, we're now getting new details on President Biden's critical uh, call today uh, with the leader of China. Let's go to our senior White House correspondent, Phil Mattingly. Phil, uh, President Biden warned President Xi uh, there would be consequences if China provides material support to Russia. So what more are you learning? That's right, Wolf. U.S. officials have been urgently working over the course of the last several weeks to head off any efforts by China to assist Russia, either economically or through military means. And those efforts reached their highest level today, a nearly two-hour secure video call, which officials say focused almost entirely on Ukraine. The call was described as substantive, detailed, and candid. In large part, the president laying out in detail what the U.S. has viewed as what has transpired over the course of the last month, but also the scale of the united response since. However, still concern on the U.S. front. Take a listen. We have that concern. The president detailed, um, uh, you know, what the implications and consequences would be if China provides <laughs> material support to Russia um, as it conducts brutal attacks against Ukrainian cities and civilians. And obviously that is something we will be watching and the world will be watching. China has to make a decision for themselves about where they want to stand uh, and how they want the history books to uh, look at them and view their actions. Uh, and uh, that is the decision for President Xi and the Chinese to make. That's a key point there, Wolf. Officials said the president did not make any explicit asks. However, the full scale of a very united Western front when it comes to the response to Russia's invasion will be on full display next week. President Biden heading to Europe will stop in Brussels for a meeting of NATO partners as well as a, a European Council meeting, also a G7 meeting called by Germany. Everything that has been put in place to counter Russia and could potentially be used to counter any efforts by China will be on display. The president making clear this isn't just a bilateral issue or warning. This is a warning that goes to the entirety of China's efforts to engage in the world. Wolf. Very important uh, set of meetings scheduled next week uh, in Brussels. Uh, thanks very much, Phil Mattingly, uh, for that report. The breaking news continues next. I'll speak one-on-one uh, -on -one with the chief diplomatic advisor to Ukrainian President Zelensky as Russia's deadly invasion now enters its fourth week.